Hi guys, I am Danny, and welcome back to my channel. So I am here at our flower farm today, Summer Sky Gardens, which is in Splendor, Texas. It's in the northeastern part of Houston, and we are in zone 9A. And I wanted to talk to y'all today about my top five easiest favorite flowers to grow from seed um, that are cool weather flowers. So these are things that you could be planting and growing now throughout the winter or starting in late winter, early spring, depending on your zone. So I'll take you through each flower and just give you a lot of tips for growing. And then I'll kind of give you some general tips on how to start seeds if this is your first year and you want to try it out. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, and let's get to it. So my top five favorite easiest flowers uh, that are cool flowers to grow from seed are Feverfew. Uh, snapdragons, status, stock, and yarrow. Um, throughout this video, I'll be putting up uh, some pictures and videos of what I have grown in the past, as well as sharing some stock photos from seed websites, just because I have some new varieties I'm growing this year. So I'll be using their pictures, and that's going to be from places like Johnny Select Seeds, Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, maybe Florette Flowers and a few other places. So just a heads up that some of the pictures you'll see are mine. A lot of them probably won't just because I'm growing a lot of new varieties. So real quick, just a few quick tips on starting seeds in general. Um, this can be super simple or super elaborate. I do have a seed starting video that I will link down below that gives a lot of detail if you wanna check this out. Um, these flowers that I'm going to be sharing are started by seed and I do start them indoors. Now they can be directly planted outside. I have found that most stuff because our climate changes so crazily here in South Texas, it's just easier for me to start most seeds indoors. There's a few that do better directly planted outside. Um, and so I have a grow room and I grow them under grow lights and trays. But, you know, if you are a home gardener and you just want to try a few of these yourself, you can certainly just get a little styrofoam cup, poke some holes in it, put them in there with some dirt, and then you can get a really inexpensive little grow light um, that you could just stick in your office or your closet or anywhere that you have just a little bit of space. And, um, and that would be super easy to do. So... I will, um, like I said, I'll link that seed starting video below and then I'll give you a look at some of the seeds that I already have that are growing that are about ready to be transplanted and then just kind of give you a peek in my grow room as it sits right now. All right, so number one on the list that I wanna talk about is Feverfew. And I actually have a dried Feverfew right here. Let's see if I can get it a little closer, there you go. Now this is a really pretty white flower um, and it grows in these little clusters. As you can see, it dries pretty well. I mean, it, it doesn't really hold its white coloring as well as you know you would like, but that's pretty much any white dried flower. But it definitely um, is a lot brighter and more fun in, uh, when it's you know fresh off the plant. Um, some of them look a little more puffy. Some of them are a little more almost daisy looking, but this is a really great and easy flower to start from seed. Um, the You wanna start these and give them about three to four months to grow um, in order to produce flowers. So if you live in the South like me, where you have a more mild, warm winter, you can definitely start these in the, in the fall, over the winter, or you know maybe do your last succession in late winter like February. Um, however, I know where I live, it tends to warm up pretty quickly in the spring. So I have found my best success starting all these kind of in the fall and winter and not waiting too late. So that way they have plenty of time in the cool weather to grow. Now, when you're planting feverfew seeds, they do need light to germinate. And this is important to know for any seed you ever start. Does it need light or not? If it needs light, then you're really going to want to surface sow it, meaning you're just going to put the little seed or sprinkle the little seeds right on top of the soil. 
and you can even kind of, you can leave them or you can just press them in very gently into the soil or cover them with the teeniest little bit of vermiculite. Um, with the feverfew, I didn't put any vermiculite. I just sprinkled the seeds in the tray, kind of pressed it in and then put it under the lights. Now, this is one that I find takes a lot longer to germinate and get going. The seed packets will say, uh, one to two weeks, but I have found it to be more like two to three weeks to really pop out of the soil and get growing. In fact, um, all of my trays right now that I'm hardening off are at about six weeks um, that I'm fixing to plant outside for all my cool season hardy annuals. The fever fever is a little behind, so I'm going to give them probably another week or two growing inside before I start hardening them off. They're just a little bit slower to go, but the germination has been great. So they're very easy to start. You just have to have a little bit of patience. So here, let me show you one of my trays of the fever few. So you can see at almost six weeks, I mean, they're still, you know, fairly small. Some are bigger than others. Some of the seeds are just now starting to pop up as well. Um, so like I said, I'll give these a little bit more time to get going before I move them outside. Now there's a handful of different varieties of fever for you, fever few <laughs> you can grow. Um, but like I said, they're all going to have that kind of white little clusters of flowers. You want to harvest it when it's about, when it has about three fourths of the flower open. And like I said, it makes a wonderful fresh flower or dried flower. It lasts pretty long in the vase. Um, and it's just a really great filler addition to take up space and just kind of complement some more of your of your bigger flowers in your arrangements. The um, varieties I'm going to be growing this year are Vegmo Snowball from uh, Florette. And then I have Snowball from Johnny's as well. And I have a mat and then I have Magic Single from Johnny Select Seeds. And I think there was another one, but I can't find the seed packet. Um, I kind of ran out of seeds fairly quickly <laughs> just because I would kind of sprinkle a little bit at a time, but I'm really excited to be growing some different varieties since I've only done one in the past. I've grown the Vegmo Snowball in the past and I really liked it, so I'm excited to try some new ones. Another couple of tips on growing Fever Few, they do really well with succession planting because usually you'll get kind of an initial stalk of blooms that you'll cut, which is kind of like the biggest and best one. And then you might get a couple of side shoots after that, but they're not gonna be as long or as big. So it just kind of varies if you're gonna be able to use them or not for arrangements. So if, if you want a succession plant, then I would say, you know, do it at least once a month for two, three months or every couple of weeks. And that'll kind of give you um, a little bit longer of a bloom window. These do grow into the summer for me. They actually um, kind of grew into June, which I was very impressed with. They could handle kind of the start of our pretty hot summers here. Um, and then they really kind of faded out. Another thing is when they do start growing, you're not gonna wanna pinch them just because like I said, that first initial bloom stalk is kind of the biggest and best. If you pinch, you're not gonna get that. All right, next up we have snapdragons. And I think a lot of people are pretty familiar with snapdragons. You usually see them this time of year at all the garden stores, nursery stores, um, advertising these as like bedding plants. And those are gonna be your shorter, just bright colored varieties. And they're super fun to add into your landscape and your garden around your house. But of course the ones that you wanna grow for cut flowers are going to be a lot more specific. A lot of them have more of the pastel muted colors and they're going to be much taller so um, snapdragons are a wonderful wonderful flower to grow and i find them to be pretty easy to grow from seed they do take about three to four months to produce flowers so once again this is also something that you might want to start at the in the fall over winter and then you know be ready for blooms in the springtime now, when you're going to plant the seeds, they are very small. <laughs> um, so you may you may be able to get away with doing one, you know, here and there, or you might just sprinkle a few like I do. They do need light to germinate. They can handle a little slight dusting of vermiculite, and that kind of helps 
settle the seed in and keep the soil moist but you don't want to be too heavy handed or you're going to have a hard time getting them to germinate. So just kind of sprinkle them on the top, press them into the soil, maybe add a little light dusting of vermiculite and you should be okay. Now snapdragons can be quick to pop up out of the soil if you have good growing conditions. Overall, the average is about seven to 14 days, but I find that they will start popping up and germinating within a few days under grow lights with a humidity dome. As for growing tips for snapdragons, um, you're going to want to pinch them when they're a few inches tall. This will encourage more branching because they will put out a lot of usable stems. I have heard people say that depending on your climate, if it doesn't end up getting too hot, you can harvest kind of the first flush of stems and then get another flush later on. Where I live, it warms up and starts getting too hot for that to happen. So kind of for us, our, our snapdragons in the hot south are gonna be more of a one and done and the fact that you get like this flush of stems and then that's kind of it. So these are a good option to transplant, I mean, sorry, to succession plant and doing, you know, two, three, four successions to kind of stagger them out. They also can get really tall and wonky, so you're gonna wanna net them or corral them, give them some kind of support. And when it's time to cut, you know, most people think that, that you wanna wait until the full stalk of all the flowers, all the little florets on the flower are fully open, but actually that's too far gone. So you wanna harvest them when about the lower third to half of the florets are open, but the top is still closed. That's really gonna give you the longest vase life, especially because all those flowers not opening, they haven't been, um, visited by pollinators yet and that's just going to make them last a lot longer. Now unfortunately snapdragons do not make great uh, dried flowers. I've tried uh, but the florets will just end up falling off. They don't keep their shape so these are really just best used for fresh flowers. Now I'm slightly obsessed with all the varieties that you can grow. Um, some are very basic bright colored you have a ton of pastel or ombre colored ones. You have some that are a little more frilly. So I am growing quite a few varieties this year, especially to trial out, you know, which ones I really like. Is there any difference in, in their production um, or how they, you know, handle our climate? But some of the ones I'm going to be growing are the Madam Butterfly series. So I have like a red and a rose color. Those are from Johnny Seeds. Um, let's see, more red. I have the bronze and the bronze with white, which actually are a little like orangey looking, and those are really, really pretty. I have an ivory color. Let's see what else. I think that's it for the Madame Butterfly. Um, yeah, more bronze. And then I have the Potomac uh, Sunrise Mix and the Dark Pink Mix. Um, so those should be really pretty as well. And then the um, from Florette Flower, I'll be growing the Chantilly Light Salmon and the Sherbert Tone Chantilly series. So those are really pretty pastel colors. And you know, Snapdragons provide that spike flower, which is really awesome in a bouquet. Usually you want maybe like two to three of them you know, in your average market bouquet. So it's good to grow a lot of different plants and have some different colors that'll work really well with your spring and possibly summer flowers. All right, the next one I wanna talk about is status. Um, most people, I think when they think of status, they think of a summer flower and it does grow in the summer, but it takes a long time to grow, around four months. So. For us in the South, once again, it's really great to start these in the fall and overwinter them. They're not going to grow, you know, a ton throughout the winter. They will be in dormancy, but they like that cool weather. And then once it warms up, they really explode with growth and they will actually, you know, they're a cut and come again flower. So they will produce multiple stems. Mine kind of petered out this past year, about halfway through the summer. We had a really hot and brutal summer. And, um, and I wasn't, you know, babying them. I just kind of let them grow and do their thing. And then they started to peter out. Um, here is just one variety I grow, just your 
very basic yellow status flower. This is actually dried. Status is probably one of the best flowers you can you can grow for dried flowers. It maintains its color and its form almost exactly like it looks when it's fresh. Um, there are different colors you can grow. Um, probably the more popular ones are the yellow, and then you have like a blue, which is a really a dark purple. You have white, and then you have a lot of like pink or rosy tones. So I like to grow lots of different colors because this is an awesome, awesome filler flower. And like I said, if you don't end up using it all fresh, you can dry it and use it that way. Now, when you go to plant your status seeds, they do need light. So once again, kind of sprinkle surface so on the top, they can handle a little slight dusting of vermiculite, that's what I do, and they will germinate within a few days to up to two weeks. Mine tend to germinate pretty fast just because of my growing conditions inside. So just a couple of tips on status. You do not need to pinch them. You do not need to net them. So they're pretty easy to grow. They, they create these kind of big bushy mounds and then the stalks fly up out of there. When you go to harvest it, make sure almost all of the little florets are open and you can see the center. Um, that will give you the longest space life. So the varieties that I'm gonna be growing are mostly from Johnny Select Seeds. So I have kind of like uh, various uh, rose shades. I have um, the blue, secret blue, which is actually, like I said, like a dark purple. The yellow, and that's it. That's the ones I'm growing. So like a dark purpley color, yellow color, and then kind of like rose uh, pinkish colors. Okay, the next one that I'm gonna talk about is stock. Stock is one of the most beautiful and fragrant flowers you can grow for springtime. I find them to be very easy to grow from seed and they just work well with any other type of flowers in a bouquet and especially if you have a lot of flowers that don't have scent, you could just put one stem of stock in a bouquet and you can smell it throughout the room. They're beautiful, they come in all these different beautiful either rich dark or light pastel shades and I just think that they're a wonderful flower to grow for the springtime. Now stock can grow a little bit on the faster side, usually around three months, and since it is a one and done flower, you are gonna want to succession plant these maybe every two to three weeks, depending on, you know, like I said, your climate and how many flowers are gonna need, but just know that like each seed is gonna put up a stock, and this is for most of, of stock. There are a couple of varieties that will branch, but overwhelming majority of stock flowers, one seed equals one flower, and then it's done. So my, like I said, make sure you succession plant. This is also another seed that does not require light for germination. So you're gonna wanna plant them about a quarter inch deep. So I just kind of like gently move the soil over, put it down, and then cover it, and it should germinate within one to two weeks. Now a few tips for growing stock. Um, you don't wanna pinch it, of course, because it's a one and done flower. You do not need to support it. The stalks are actually pretty uh, strong. Um, so no you know, netting or corralling is needed. And then when you go to harvest the flowers, they're kind of like snapdragons. You want to catch them when just like the bottom third to half of the florets are open, not the full entire thing, and that will give you the longest base life from your stock flowers. On the negative side with stock, they do not dry that great. I have dried them before and the florets will fall off. Now, I will say I found that, you know, once the florets fall, fell off, I could use those um, more in like a loose um, arrangement, like when I make my Christmas ornaments, or if you wanted to make, you know, flower confetti, they do really nicely in that, but overall they're not gonna stay on the stalk, and it's really hard to work with them with like glue if you're making a wreath or a craft, so I would say overall stock is not the best flower to dry. Now stock is another one that I'm a little obsessed with all the different colors. Um, you can see 
tons of seed packets and I'm just trialing a bunch of different ones this year. I've kind of grown mixes in the past. Um, I'm going to be trying the iron series which are supposed to be more on the like double fluffier side. Stock can grow either sing in single flowers or double flowers and of course the doubles are a lot more um, what's the word? Um, people want the double flowers. I can't think of the word right now. People want the doubles more than the singles, but I think the singles are still pretty and your average customer is not going to care. But if you're trying to sell to like a florist or do event work, you're going to want more of the doubles. So I'm going to be growing the Iron Blue series, which is more of a purple, the apricot, cherry, the marine color, which is a bluish color, rose, iron cherry, uh, and then I think the champagne is somewhere in here too. Um, so those are a lot of different pretty varieties. I'm also going to be growing the Stock X Champagne, which is a new variety from Johnny Select Seeds, and it looks to be a really fluffy double flower so and it's it's a champagne color so it's kind of like a creamy color which i think you know of course is beautiful for wedding work florists are going to love it it'll grow great um go well with other flowers so i'm excited to see how that one ends up looking um i have a few different varieties from halden garden let's see avalanche which is like a white apple blossom which is a pinkish color and then i have cherry blossom apricot and then one that I was able to get my hands on this year which I think is going to be neat to see how it grows is quartet rainbow this is one if not the only variety that branches so I am going to try these out this year and see how the branching does see how the coloring does are they going to be long enough to use after they branch we'll see I'll let you guys know all right, last but not least is yarrow. And I actually have a dried yarrow here. Let's see if it'll show up. Not the best ever. This is um, this is really a great flower to dry, but it is also so beautiful when it's fresh. And I love yarrow because it really like fills up and takes up space. It's kind of got this domed effect, which, work, which works really well with a lot of other flowers. And it comes in some really, really lovely shades. Where I am in the south, it can actually become a perennial. So it will, uh, you plant it this time of year and it will kind of just gradually grow a little bit over the winter and the springtime it will bloom. It may continue blooming into the summer depending on the weather. And then you can kind of cut it back and let it keep going. I have some in my garden right now that I grew from seed last year and they're still going strong. <laughs> they look really good actually. They made it through the summer, I think too, because they were in the shade a little bit. Um, but if you're more on a Northern climate, this might be more of an annual. So I think that's just something to look up where you live. Now that being said, yarrow does take a lot longer to grow, about four months. And I find that you don't need to succession plant it because it will continuously put out blooms. If you are planting it by seed, it does need light to germinate. So sprinkle, surface sow, press into the soil, and go from there. It does take a little bit longer to germinate, usually closer to a couple of weeks. A couple of tips on growing. You don't need to pinch this. You don't need to net or support this. So it's a pretty easy flower to grow. When you go to harvest the flowers, you want to make sure that most of the little florets are open. Uh, that will give you the longest base life. If you cut it too early where a lot of them are not open yet, it's just going to wilt. So let it open up fully. That's also when you want to cut it if you want to dry it. Once again, it makes a wonderful dried flower. This year, I'm going to be growing the yellow, of course. I'm going to be trying this pearl double diamond. It's got a little bit different shape to it. And then I'm going to be growing the flower burst red shades from Johnny's, uh, which kind of gives a whole different array of like pinks and roses and purples and, and red colors. So very excited to see how all of these work out. 
All right, guys, there you have it. Um, let me show you kind of real quick in my grow room how some things look, and then I'll show you some of the trays of seeds that are outside hardening off right now. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. All right, so here we are in our grow room, and you can see some of the shelves are empty right now because I just moved stuff outside a few days ago. And here are some of the trays. The kitties like to hang out in here because it's warm. These ones on the bottom, I just planted yesterday, so of course nothing's popping up there. And then, like I said, these I'm waiting on the fever few to get a little bit bigger. Here are some of the trays that I have outside. So for instance, here is some of the stock and what's over here? Some more stock here. Let me find the, oh, here's some of the snapdragons and the yarrow. So here's some of the yarrow, a few different varieties. And then over here are the snapdragons. So yeah. Everything's looking good and should be starting to transplant within the next few days and next week.